Have you ever wondered where your bed came from? Did it come from wood recycled from an old barn, which was once new, which was once a pile of logs, which were once trees standing in a forest? Let's step back and take a look at that whole process from tree to furniture. Let's watch from the beginning as Mr. Pete cuts down a tree. Put on his safety gear, start up the chainsaw, and cut a notch out of the tree on the side that he wants to see the ball cords. Cut on the back side of the tree. He does not cut all the way through the tree. He'll put metal wedges in, hammer them in, to make the tree begin to lean just a bit. And more sawing. And timber! Down goes the tree. He'll remove his safety gear, put his chainsaw down, and go over to check out that tree that has just fallen, and he'll cut it into logs and paint the ends with a wood sealer to prevent them from cracking as they dry out. The smaller ones and crooked parts of the tree will be used for firewood. Let's watch Mr. Pete as he uploads firewood from his log truck. First, see the outrigger supports go down, help stabilize the truck, and then from his seat over the cab of the truck, he raises the swing arm with the grapple hook on it and picks up the logs. He'll place the first logs on the ground to act as a base to keep the other logs dry and off the ground. logs are smaller than the ones for Mr. Pete's pile, and they're pretty crooked. There's pieces that were not good enough to make into furniture or boards, so they will be recycled into firewood. Speed things up just a little bit to watch this process go a little bit faster. These logs have dead spots in them. And now we'll kick it into high speed and watch through the magic of video as it unloads very quickly. This was actually a very slow process, but through the magic of video, we can make that pile grow tall very quickly. over, lower the arm, outriggers go up so the truck is completely on the ground again, and he'll leave those logs to be cut and split for firewood. Back in his shop, He'll use some of the larger logs to create beautiful furniture, such as this bench made from one solid piece of a sycamore log. 
these cutting boards made from black walnut. He can also make things from large slabs of wood, such as this counter made from walnut, this table made of cherry, and this very unique coffee table made from a hollowed out sycamore tree. Let's take a look back at what is happening now with Mr. Pete's log pile. He's getting ready to mill those logs into boards. See the arm lift the log up onto the platform. The arm lowers back down. And there's another arm that comes up from underneath to turn and rotate the log until he's got it in just the right spot to make his first cut. He's using this portable bandsaw that has a saw blade that will slice through the logs, cutting off the bark and squaring it up to one large piece. And then he'll slice it into boards. He gets it adjusted and ready to go where he wants to cut. And off it goes for the first cut that will remove the top layer of bark. Nothing is wasted when he cuts these logs. All of the edges with the bark on them will be cut up for scrap firewood. And the good piece in the center will be used for the boards for his barn. Replace the old siding that has deteriorated. So the saw just runs back and forth, lowers down a bit for the correct thickness that he's looking for. And when that side is done, the arm comes back up again and rotates the log one quarter turn. The support arm sticks back up to hold it tight. And he begins to cut the second side. edge with the bark on top that is completely bark covered isn't good for anything except firewood, but these other pieces that aren't as wide as what he wants can be reused for thinner boards for another project. So now he's done three sides. You can see the lifting arm come up again. Rotate that log for its fourth and final side. And here goes the saw to cut off the top piece with all of the bark. You can see on the right hand side of the saw, the chute that's coming down, that's a pile of sawdust that's coming out of the machine as it cuts through the bark. Now he's got it down to a giant timber that could be used to build something, but he's going to slice it into thicknesses for boards. It's fine. The machine just goes back and forth, back and forth. Slicing board after board. After he's cut a few boards, two to three boards, then it'll be lifted away. Once he's finished slicing everything, those first few that we saw that had bark on the edges will be pressed up together and have those edges of bark cut down. 
these boards aren't going to end up as wide as the ones that he'll put in this barn for siding, but they can still be used for other projects. Trim all of the bark off on one side. Put away those bark trimmings. Board arm comes back out and he'll flip the boards all over. Press them up against the side again where that support arm will clamp them tight. So we'll take off the top of the bark on this. Through the magic of high-speed video, we can watch a whole log being sawed up very, very quickly now as it goes through the top, turns, puts off the next side and he checks it for thickness, turns again, This makes it look like a very fast process, but it is not as we saw in those first videos that were at regular speed. And now the saw is slicing the boards. And he's stacking them up on the side. You can see him putting spacers between the layers. That's to allow air to circulate because the boards will have to sit and dry out before he's able to use them and put them on his barn. After drying out, his boards will become barn siding, similar to what we see here on the side of this barn, which will lead us to take a step back in time with Mr. Bob to the Marling K. Hoff Memorial Log Barn at the Carroll County Farm Museum to learn about how barns were made long ago. We're out here at the Carroll County Farm Museum at the Huff Log Barn. Now this is a barn that was built when George Washington was president. So talking about something that's got a lot of age to it. And of course, it's built in wood. Now, if you really want to see it up close, you can come out to the Farm Museum through March. I believe admission is free uh, and a whole lot more to see than the Huff Barn. But what did, what did these farmers do back then? We wanted to build a barn. Well, the first thing you had to do was go out in the woods and cut down trees. Now, we talked about sawing down the trees. What did they do? They used, they used a two-man saw. And that saw, obviously, a person with each handle and the person with the saw, you pull. And then the person on the other side pulls. You don't push because then the saw buckles. And if the, if the saw is sharp, you can cut down a tree in a fair amount of time. It's certainly not like the power equipment you use today and uh, required a little bit of muscle that you might not have needed in today's work for those kinds of things. said that some of these trees, when they were cut down, and they were cut down somewhere around 1790, were already 250 years old. Stacking the logs up Oh, kind of like Lincoln logs, if you're familiar with that old tool. Um, and of course, there's nothing holding them in place except the notches and gravity, the weight of the logs. Now, does that mean that there's nothing else holding them together? Are they going to stay there? Well, I can lean on them and they're not going to fall over. And I guarantee you, if a hurricane would come through here, it might blow the roof off, it might blow the siding off. 
they're going to be there. Now, they have to smooth the sides of these logs. They used a variety of tools that are here. One of the important ones is the adze. No, but this one is beautifully smooth and this one's rough. And so I imagine that, I'm just imagining that's the one that was done by the master builder while the beginners, the apprentices, were doing the other ones and learning how to get them as smooth as these guys got them. Um, wood is a, and of course we use a great deal of wood today in construction uh, because it is, it lasts. As Mr. Bob said, wood lasts, which we can see because the Hoff barn was built when George Washington was president. This barn and many others have been well maintained and preserved and will be featured in a spring video about the barns of Carroll County. However, not all barns are as well maintained and sometimes fall into a state of disrepair. When that happens, they can be torn down and the lumber milled for recycling and reuse. While these boards may look a bit rough to begin, in the hands of a master craftsman, those old barns can be turned into beautiful things, like the bed from the beginning of this video. Let's take a look at the process as we watch Mr. Tom transform the old barn wood into something new. Cut away the bad edges on both sides. And then check to see if the board is flat. Next, he'll run it through the joiner. Put a good smooth edge on it. And then through the planer to get it smoothed off. If it's too thick, you'll lower it down and run it through again. And back to the table saw to cut it to the width that you need. to the planer again, get it down to the exact thickness. Then over to the chop saw to get it cut the length that he needs. And then to the mortising machine to cut a groove in. You can see the grooves here, those are mortises, and then he's going to cut the tenon using the table saw again. You can see one tenon already done on this side. That will fit into the mortise groove, make a solid tight joint for the furniture that he's making. And then there you can see a perfect fit. So who knows what those old barns will become? Will they be pine kitchen cabinets, or an entertainment center, or a set of cubbies, or a chestnut bookcase, or an oak and hemlock bed? So the next time you see a tree in the woods, use your imagination. Will it become a slab wood table, or a barn, or end up as recycled wood cabinets? Who knows, but the one thing we know for sure is that the whole tree can be used in many ways, from furniture to firewood. <laughs>